Math 31, welcome to example 8. Let's try and solve this logarithmic equation. The first thing I notice is that I have logs on one side of the equation and not logs on the other. So what I want to do is I want to combine this, these two logarithms into a single logarithm, and they are the same base, so I'm allowed to do that. But what I also want to make sure I do is that once I get this as a single logarithm, I transform it into the equivalent exponential equation, and we solve that. So taking a look, I have two logarithms that are going to be, the, these two logarithms are being added, so I can use the product property and combine this through multiplication. And that will be equal to 3. Now I can FOIL this out, which I will in a little bit, but once I have this logarithm, this single logarithm on the left side, I can translate this into the equivalent exponential equation, right? And we always have those three pieces that we have in our logarithm and our exponential equation. So I know the base of my logarithm is the base of my power. And I know the logarithm, what it's equal to, that is the exponent. So that will be 2 cubed. And that puts the argument over here on the right side of the equation. So let me erase all of those circles and clean this up just a little bit. All right, so taking a look, I really have that 2 cubed is equal to 2x minus 5 times x minus 3. All right, and again, that's the circle equation, not a technical term. And then I basically have a quadratic equation that I need to solve. So let me go ahead and FOIL this out. This is going to be 2x squared. Outer is minor, minus 6x. Inner is minus 5x. We've got, what, plus 15. 2 cubed, it is not 6, all right? 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 cubed, is 8. So let me go ahead and see what I can do here. I have 2x squared minus 11x. When I move the 8 over, that'll be plus 7 is equal to 0. And as I take a look at this, I don't think there's anything that would multiply to 14 but add up to negative 11. So I think I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula to go ahead and solve this. If I want to use the quadratic formula, that would be negative b, oops, did not put the entire number, negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Let's simplify this a little bit. All right, 11 squared is 121, and then 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 7 is 56, so I'm looking at 121 minus 56. I know I could do that on my calculator, but I want to try and do this one at least for a little bit without my calculator. So if I subtract that, I'm looking at 65. All right, let's see what we have. We have 11 plus or minus the square root of 65 over 4. And I think that's pretty much as far as I can go without my calculator. So let me go grab my calculator, and then let's see what these two numbers are equal to, because these are potentially my two solutions. And it says give exact value, so I would leave it like this, but I do need to check that neither of these answers make my arguments zero or negative. So let's clear this out. Let's try 11 plus the square root of 65 and divide that by four. So it looks like, oops, Oh my goodness, I made my own error. This is great, I want you to take a look at it, right? What is wrong with what I entered on my calculator when compared to what I have on my paper? I did not put parentheses around that binomial in the numerator. So what my calculator did is it just took the square root of 65 and divided it by four, and then it added it to 11, because it was doing PEMDAS. When really, what I wanted was four, oh gosh, let me do this, four, uh, there. What I really wanted was the four to be, to be divided into this entire binomial. The 11, not only should the four divide, get divided into square root of 65, it should have also gotten divided into 11. So when I do this, you can see I get a much different answer, and this is one of the correct roots. So we got 4.766. Now, this is not an exact value. That is a decimal approximation. These are the exact values with the square roots in them. 
but I'm just converting them to decimals so I can make sure that these are legit answers. So let me do 11 minus root 65 over four, and it looks like my other answer potentially is 0.734. All right, so before I decide yay or nay on these, let's just take a look at what happens when I plug these numbers into my argument. So let me take 4.76, all right? And then I need to decide if x is 4.76, will two times x minus five be positive? Well, two times 4.7 is gonna be close to nine. Maybe it's like 9.4. And if I do 9.4 minus 5, that is going to be positive. And if you're struggling with what I'm trying to say, I'm saying if I took x being 4.76, if I did 2 times 4.76 and I subtracted 5, we can see that that argument is still positive. And if I plug it in here, if I do 4.76 and I subtract 3, we can see again that that argument is still positive. So this is a legit answer. I can keep it. All right, now on the flip of that, let's try 0.734. Now if I plug in 0.734 and try and do 2x minus 5, we're looking at a negative number, and I can't have an argument be 0 or negative, so this answer gets booted out. So my only answer in exact values is 11 plus the square root of 65 over 4. All right, so when I say exact values, I do not want decimal approximations. I actually wanna see the square roots and the E's and whatever other shenanigans you got in there. All right, we're gonna keep practicing um, solving these logarithmic and exponential equations. I'll see you in a bit, bye.